If your camera doesn't include a built-in GPS receiver, Aperture 3 lets you add location data from a GPS tracking device or even from your iPhone. To add locations to your photos, open a project and then click Places on the toolbar. From the GPS pop-up menu, choose Import GPS Track. Then choose either a GPX or NMEA file that you've already downloaded from your tracking device or from a GPS. A track path is automatically displayed on the map. To connect your photos to the track, just drop one from the browser at the bottom of the screen to the spot on the path where the photo was taken. Just click Assign Locations to place all the other photos in one step. Aperture will automatically calculate where all of the other photos should be placed along the same track. If you don't have a GPS tracker, you can take a picture with your iPhone and use it as a GPS reference for the photos in your library. Choose Import GPS from iPhone Photos from the GPS pop-up menu in the Places view. Aperture shows all of the photos with locations currently on your iPhone. Just choose the ones that have locations matching any of the photos in your Aperture library. The imported locations show up on the map as purple waypoints. Just drop the photos from your library onto the waypoints where they were taken. Aperture's advanced GPS tools make it easy to add locations to any of your photos with just a few clicks. Whether you're making sweeping adjustments or subtle tonal corrections, the level and curve controls in Aperture 3 let you create exactly the look you're after. The levels adjustment lets you control the shadows, midtones, and highlights in an image. Here the histogram shows all of the tones in your image, from black to white. To fix an image with weak contrast, drag the black control point until it's beneath some of the darkest data in the histogram. When you improve the contrast, the data in the histogram extends into the shadows. You can also drag the white control point until it's beneath some of the whitest data in the histogram. With the midpoint control on the levels adjustment, you can brighten or darken the midtones in your images without affecting the lightest and darkest areas. Drag it to the left to brighten midtones and to the right to darken them. For even more control, click the quarter tone button. This adds two more control points to the levels histogram. Use the lower quarter tone control to adjust the shadow areas and the upper control to brighten or darken the highlight areas. You can make similar adjustments using curves when you choose it from the pop-up menu. Click on the curve and you can bring your highlights and shadows up or down by simply bending the curve. You can also set the black and white points on your photo by dragging the corresponding control points in or out. Or click the Auto button to do it automatically. To target a range of tones in your photo, you can set a custom point on the curve. Click the Custom Point button, then use the loop to click on the tone that you want to adjust. This adds a point to the curve that you can move up or down to brighten or darken the corresponding tones in the photo. Switch channels to make adjustments to just the red, green, or blue channels in the image. This is great for correcting color casts. The curves in Aperture support the extended range of RAW images. For example, when working with photos that have blown out highlights, change the Range pop-up menu to Extended to see highlight data that was captured by your camera's sensor. Drag the white point to the right to bring it back into range and recover the highlights in your image. With levels and curves, and the ability to apply both of them selectively, Aperture gives you a set of powerful controls for making precise adjustments to your images. Showcase your favorite photographs by creating custom portfolio or coffee table quality books with Aperture 3. To get started, Select the images that you want to include, select New from the toolbar, and click Book. Then choose the kind of book that you want to make. Select the size and the theme that you want to use, and click Choose Theme. At the bottom of the book layout interface is the standard browser with all of the images that you want to include. Above are two panels, one with thumbnails of your book pages, and another showing a large preview of your page. To add an image to a page, just drag it from the browser and drop it on any of the gray photo boxes. Once an image is on a page, you can crop it by double-clicking and use the control slider to zoom in. You can also drag the image to reposition it. 
You can choose to add photos to the book automatically. Arrange them in the browser in the order that you want them to appear, and select Autoflow Unplaced Images from the Book Actions menu. Aperture adds them to the book layout, placing each one in the next available box. Once images are placed in the book, they're marked so you'll know that you've used them. Each book theme includes a number of different page designs. The new journal and photo essay themes have pages that incorporate maps from your place's locations. You can choose a new page design by selecting the page that you want to change and then choosing a new master page type. If you'd like to customize the look of your book, click on the Edit Layout button. This lets you edit page layouts by adding, removing, rearranging, and resizing individual photo and text boxes to create completely customized pages. Choose Show Layout Options from the Action menu to open a panel that lets you customize even further, adding borders to any selected photo boxes or rotating them. When your book is done, you can click Print to print the book on your own printer, or click Buy Book to order a book from Apple's book printing service and have a bound copy shipped to your door. In Aperture, you can easily select multiple images to view them side by side, so it's easy to compare images and make changes to a group of them. First, select a project that contains the images that you want to work with. If both the browser and viewer aren't already visible, click the Split button on the toolbar until you can see them both. From the browser, click the first image that you want to select and it'll appear in the viewer. Then, hold down the Shift key and select another image. Aperture automatically selects all of the images between the two and arranges them in the viewer. To deselect the images, just click anywhere in the background. When you're working with successive images, Aperture allows you to group the images into stacks so that you can compare them all and find the best one. To do this in full screen, press F to enter full screen mode. Then, command click each image that you want to eliminate. When multiple images are selected, a white border indicates the primary select image. This is the one that you can adjust using the Adjustments panel. You can also modify it using the Metadata Inspector when multiple images are selected. Once you've narrowed it down to your best image, you can select it as the pick to place it at the top of the stack. These selection techniques can make viewing, comparing, and selecting your best shots quick and easy. Aperture 3 makes it easier than ever to create professional quality prints and contact sheets on your home photo printer. To start, select the photos that you'd like to output, and then choose Print Images from the File menu. If you've calibrated the printer and you're using a custom ICC profile, you can select it in this pop-up menu. There are some great presets that'll help you output your images quickly. This one prints each of your photos on a separate page using the defaults shown at the bottom of the window. You can print more than one photo on each page. Just use the Image Size menu to switch to a smaller photo size, and then enter the number of photos that you'd like on each page. To adjust the spacing and margins, just drag the guides on the image preview. For even more control over the page layout and print quality, click the More Options button. Here you can adjust the image to compensate for your printer's output. For example, if your printed images tend to look dark, you can compensate with the brightness setting. These settings are only applied to the printed images. They don't change your photos in Aperture. With multiple images selected, you can also choose to print contact sheets. There's even a metadata view, which will print metadata under each thumbnail. You can customize it with a title, subtitle, and a logo. In addition to the built-in presets, you can create custom printing presets of your own. Presets store your color profile, adjustments, margins, borders, and other settings. Once you've got your settings just the way you want them, click Print. 
Creating beautiful, high-quality, color-managed prints is a breeze with Aperture 3.